The next speaker is Mr. Kevin Baoke, Global CEO and Founder of B2Wise. Prior to this, he was the Managing Director of Barlow World SCS for 20 years. He has 25 years of experience in supply chain planning and has worked on over 300 MRP and forecasting projects globally. He's a guest lecturer on MRP at Warwick University UK and Polytech in Hong Kong. His presentation is Artistic versus Scientific Planning, Best Practices for a VUCA or VUCA VUCA world. Please help me in welcoming Kevin to the stage. Hello, can everyone hear me? Am I good? Oh, wow, very good. Well, I'm really honored to be here. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present. Um, as I said, my name is uh, Kevin Boke. I'm the global CEO of uh, B2Wise. Um, I've asked my colleague, um, Alan Janssen van uh, Feren, who's the, the head of our India, Middle East, and Africa um, um, organization to join me and to, to participate in this presentation. So we're really honored to, to be here. So let's get going and let's talk about this uh, fascinating subject that uh, Naveen mentioned, DDMRP. Okay, how cool is that? Let's see how this goes. Okay, so Alan, um, let's start off. Let me ask you a question before you come and join me here. What is the objective of, of planners in the world today? Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everyone. Um, we deal with many companies, many different organizations, but the objective of planners and supply chain planners in any organization is really about maintaining the balance. And it's the balance between inventory in the organization, service levels that you're trying to maintain, and the ability, the capability that the business actually has to deliver that. Now, if you're unable to maintain the inventory or appropriate correct levels of inventory in the organization, the factor that suffers is cash, the cash flow in the organization, that lifeblood of the business. If you're unable to maintain the service, that promise that you've made to the market, what's going to get hurt is your customer satisfaction levels and ultimately market share. Now, how planners are doing this, how they're maintaining this balance is in their primary process, which is really the replenishment process, the decision of how much do I need to order? How much do I need to buy from suppliers? How much do I need to manufacture? And when do I need to do that? When do I make that decision? And where does that inventory go? How do I deploy um, that decision? Now, regardless of who we deal with, and we deal with companies in multiple different industries around the world, the customer pains that we have are always the same. And it depends on who you're speaking to in the organization. Financial directors, they're saying we need to reduce costs, we need to reduce working, in, working capital. Our sales directors are saying we need to try and get a more accurate forecast, chasing that 90% forecast measure that Naveen had in his presentation earlier. The supply chain planner is just buried in data, buried in Excel, trying to calculate what is that replenishment number, that order that they need to be placing. And our production teams are saying we just need a stable plan so that we can manage our manufacturing process with clear priorities. And ultimately, on either side of the supply chain, our customers and suppliers are just ultimately upset about the, the entire situation. So now the question becomes, what are the different approaches that we see in industries for companies solving this problem? Okay. So around the world, um, um, Ellen and I have worked in a lot of different places. There's always two approaches to solve the problem. You have the, uh, the formal way of doing it, or we have the informal way of doing it. Uh, another way to describe formal or informal is uh, formal is scientific, and informal is artistic. And if you think about your brain, you have the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. And your left side of the brain is all about systems, it's all about numbers, it's all about analytical thinking. The right side of your brain is that uh, expressive emotional side, is where we make gut calls, gut feels. We, we just seem to know what to do and we become more like artists. So that's the, that's the way that you do it. Um, if you are artistic in your business, what happens is you become reliant on an individual planner. You become reliant on an individual that just seems to know what's going on. 
They, they always seem to make the right call. They are specialists in your business. They understand the tribal knowledges, all the little nuances of your businesses. They're very good at gathering information and building up those Excel spreadsheets that we all love to hate. Um, they know the numbers. They can just look at the numbers and see the problems very easily. And, and above all, they care. They care a lot about your business. And while you have these people, things normally work very well. However, in our experience, and where we deal with most companies, is the day that that planner leaves. Because every hero has his day. And the day that person walks out to business, you find I have no process, I have no system, and I have no hero. And now I'm exposed to the elements. And this is where you've now got to start saying, how do I become scientific? How do I go build robust processes to make sure that I spend the money of the company in the most effective way? And that's what we want to go and do. So how do you become uh, scientific? Number one, you've got to train your people. Um, I always ask people, how many people in planning have been formally trained? And the answer, sadly, is very, very few. You've got to have good data. You've got to have formal systems. You've got to have formal reviews. Um, and you need to adopt in a continuous improvement mindset. Getting these things work is not something you just buy, implement and get going. It's a, it's, it takes time. It's got to be built into the culture of the company. So how do you take a journey? How do you start? So if you're sitting at informal and you want to get to formal, what do you do? So the first thing you need is you need to have a vision. You need to have a methodology, a method that you decide to follow. You've got to be able to see what the end game is going to be. And that's the role of the senior managers in the business, is to define that vision and, and decide on that methodology that you're going to use. The next thing you need to do is you have to train your people. The next thing you do is you have to implement methodologies and, and information systems to give the people the right information. The next thing you've got to do is you've got to fix the data. Now you'll notice here that I'm talking about implementing systems before I fix the data. And people always say to us, oh, but you know, I must first fix the data before I implement systems. And my answer to that is no. The amount of companies that I've spoken to that say to us, oh, we've got to fix the data. I come back seven years later, and you know what they say to me? Oh, I've got to fix the data. Because they have no tools on how to fix the data. So if you select the right systems, you have the right tools in order to fix the data. The next thing you do is you've got to document the process. You've got to write down exactly what people do, when they mean to do it, who's meant to do it, and you've got to follow up on those processes. The next thing you do is you've got to run continued improvement processes. And those processes have actually got to fix problems. We, we've all heard of the Preto principle. So when we implement these continuous improvement processes, it's always about just choose the top five items the top five processes and get those fixed this week and then come back next week and then do the next top five and it's incredible how fast you will go and how the momentum speeds up in that process and finally you have to run formal review processes in your business um, Alan mentioned that infantry it's the, the cash that you spend it's the biggest investment you make in your business and I always turn around to senior guys and say to them, when's the last time did you attend an infantry meeting in your business? When you sat down with your planners and said, how are you spending your money? Because most guys don't actually attend those meetings. So you've got to get in there and you've got to make sure that you show commitment to those, those meetings. Because this is where you're going to make or break your company when it comes to decisions about how you, what you stock and what service that you offer to the company. Okay, now obviously we can go through these, and these can be uh, subjects that go on forever, but I'm going to focus now just on, on two things. The first one is the methodology, okay, and the second one is training. So in the methodology, what methodology do you choose? Um, we live, as you heard Naveen talking about a VUCA world, we live in a world that is exceptionally volatile, that is um, complex, that is ambiguous. Um, and, and we've got to actually resolve, we've got to try and solve this. Um, if you go on the internet and you type in uh, planning systems, you get presented with a huge number of technologies that are world class. Artificial intelligence, and every board meeting I go into, a CEO will say to me, oh, how do I get artificial intelligence into my business? Machine learning, 
How do I get a machine to learn so I don't need to take me so reliant on a planner? New part introduction, MEIO, mixed uh, multi echelon infantry optimization. Um, these technologies are out there and extremely powerful. But in order to leverage those technologies, you have to have an underlying planning methodology. And most of us who run ELP systems will, will have a methodology embedded in those tools called MRP, Materials Requirements Planning. And we take all those technologies that we spend millions of dollars on and we load them into those tools. And what happens is those tools, sadly, were invented in the 1960s and fundamentally haven't changed since. So we do all this clever maths and we then load it into an MRP system that is just not fit for purpose. So what do most companies do? And what have most companies done? They've stopped using MLP. And 95% of the companies we go to are using an Excel spreadsheet in order to plan their infantries. And they're completely dependent on that, on that tool. Okay, so what has happened? In the, uh, uh, 10 years ago in, uh, in America, the uh, Supply Chain Institute uh, went to their chairperson, a lady by the name of Carol Patek, an MRP and planning expert who had been chairperson of APAC for 10 years and they went to a lean expert called Chad Smith and they said things have got to change. We, we have to find a new methodology. So these two were given a task to go and redefine MRP. They spent uh, a good 10 years investigating, researching, talking to all the authors, all the, 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 the the people that come with most of the, the big methodologies and they came up with this new concept called DDMRP. It was released in 2010 um, and it has really accelerated. The third edition of the book is now available so if you go onto Amazon and you go type in DDMRP you'll now see it's got its own book um, and, that is, and, and this methodology which en encompasses both MRP and Lean and Theory of Constraints and Six Sigma um, is now becoming the, the best practice in, in Europe and North America on how companies are operating. To date, um, about uh, 9,000 people have been formally trained through the methodology. Uh, companies like uh, Shell have put 200 to 350 people through the actual training and certified them. Um, the industries that it covers is any company where it is running MRP or running an Excel spreadsheet, this methodology uh, can apply. The results that are being reported, you go on the internet, you'll see every single result you'd expect. Improved customer service, compression in lead time to market, right sizing of infantries, lower total costs, um, and probably the most important one down the bottom is a system that is easy and intuitive to use. And the one thing that every company that implements DDMRP reports is they stop using Excel to plan the infantries. And they become more formal, which is the goal that we want. So how do you go ahead? Step number one, you have to put thoughtware before software. So you have to get trained. So the Demand Driven Institutes, all their courses have now been approved by the Supply Chain Management Organization in North America and you can undertake these courses. Um, the courses consist of a planner. This is for the people to understand the calculations, the everyday usage of it. The leader course, which is for the managers to make sure that they can understand how to manage the planners. And then for the boardroom, on how do we do that long-term planning to make sure we bring that into our operating model. And that's how we, and, and that's how we undertake with it. Okay, so Alan, how does this training actually work? Thanks, Kevin. Yes, like you said, training's step number one. And I personally am a big fan of, of <coughs> thoughtware before software. We have to train our people to understand the logic that's behind the decisions that they're first taking. Now, the Institute has a fantastic um, basket of training to do that for um, individual planners. And the first step is what we call a demand-driven planner training course two-day course that teaches you the mechanics of DDMRP and you can see some of the modules that you work through. However, what we do find is we do the training with um, planners and when they go back into their businesses they struggle to cross the bridge between what the concept is and what the theory is and practically applying that in their reality and in their environment. 
And anyone that goes for training, training from an organization will know once they come back in the business, their manager is saying, well, we've gone on this training. How do we pick this up and run and get actual sustainable business value? So we're a big fan of the Benjamin Franklin approach when it comes to training. It says, tell me and I'll forget teach me and I'll remember, but involve me and I truly learned. And we want to drive that learning with the people we engage with so that they get that deeper understanding of the methods. And this is the, the, the method that we like to use to do that. It's a workshop we call a DD Bricks, which immerses the planner in the methodology to tangibly feel the difference between what the theory is and how you actually manage this model in an environment and it's the best way we find to bring the company along this this journey of education and and ddmrp now we've trained thousands of people around the world around uh, dd bricks um, it's a lot of fun um, that they have which probably makes it easy to get people involved but multinational organizations such as michelin coca-cola louis vuitton They've actually built this into their internal training logic, having trainers inside the business, expanding that in the organization to hundreds of people, not just in the manufacturing and supply chain area, but the components that that touches, finance, sales, R&D, engineering. The whole business needs to understand this concept of tying directly to demand, to customer demand, pulling through the organization using flow principles, and this is a great vehicle to do that. Okay. Thanks, Alan. So, you know, coming away from here, I hope some of you are asking your, yourself the question, are we formal or are we informal? Are we scientific in how we run our business or are we autistic? So what we do in order to help companies, um, we have a, uh, a little survey that we've identified as seven very basic questions. Um, you, there's a, a, a QR code. If you want, you can scan that QR code. We can give it to you. You can go online and you can, you can answer those questions. We'll, we'll tell you very simply what your answers are, but we'll show you on a global scale exactly how many people and what the rest of the world is thinking about this. A bit of a benchmarking exercise. Um, because we're at a conference, you always got to give something away at a conference, very important. So if you do do that and you wanted to, um, we run a number of these DDBRICS uh, sessions. We've actually learned to run them online, even though we much prefer them to do in person because playing with Lego is a lot more fun than actually clicking on, on blocks and moving around on a computer screen. Um, but we will uh, afford you a discount on the next session that we, that we run. So, guys, thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate it. We, we're really honored that we were able to come and present you. And I hope that we've given you a little bit uh, of, of food for thought for the rest of your day. Okay, thank you very much.